Okay, so this would be uh, this is day eight of the 30-day project that we're doing for the servo motion controls. Uh, basically, a full system that will be running virtual axes uh, and have it tied into an HMI system to have it fully developed and running. Uh, so this should show a complete setup and the, the way things tie together as far as a coordinated motion machine. Okay, so uh, today's video we'll be going over draw control. Uh, so each axis will have its draw control put in. And uh, so to keep in mind, uh, what I did to, to kind of speed the, the uh, video up to help help along keep the 15 minute time limit that we, we have, is I went ahead and put in some, uh, in the basic logic, so in the, the machine control logic, I've added a, a rung in here that says, okay, the, the machine run is commanded, and I want, I want to use draw control at that point. This, this tag is a controller scope tag, so I want to be able to use it anywhere into the program. And what I did is I have not put any programming into any of these um, other, uh, I say I should say, uh, axis uh, 2 through 4. But what I did is I, I went ahead and programmed axis 1, similar to what we did in the fault programming and stuff of that nature. So I'll go ahead and, and run through that logic. Okay, so what I did is I said, okay, in the instance of the draw control being cut on, right, from a start command, the instance of a draw control being cut on and the axis is on, the axis status is on, it's okay to gear. If it's okay to gear, then as long as it's not updating, then we want to go ahead and gear the axis to the, we want to gear the, the uh, number one axis to the, the virtual axis, right? So when we do that, we want to have the, the ratio of the gearing is actually our draw control, right? So anytime the draw control changes, it will change the, it will redo the gearing. And the way we do that is we say that if an input value from the draw control is not equal to the last value, which is down here, then in the middle, we would basically index this tag that says uh, update draw rate. And we put that in place as basically to interrupt, to break the jog command or the, uh, the gear command temporarily to update the rate. Right, so it will not update unless you break it and remake it. So that's what we do real, like periodically, uh, real quickly, I should say. If this value is not equal to this value, then it will make this fat make this bit, which will drop this out, and then remake it as soon as it it loads it in. So it's basically the scan time that is controlling that. Um, so the way this works is if the draw value is put in, if, if say for instance you had a draw of 1.2 and the last draw was 1.3, then it would automatically index that. Now it's not doing that because I'm not on, online right now, uh, but you kind of get the point. So right now if we were to cut this on and everything would run, it would do the draw rate based upon, it, uh, uh, the ratios would be the counts, right? The slave counts and the master counts are uh, one to one. The uh, master reference is an actual, so it's an actual, not a command. We want the actual uh, reference. We want the uh, ratio format clutch enabled with an accelerate of ten. And so basically, we're using the same. We're using our UDTs like we we have on our uh, our basic system, right? So our our custom our user-defined uh, UDT that we made, we're still using that same attribute or that, that same data type, I should say, in this scenario. So as far as the mag control, the mag control tag, it's based upon what we made prior in the, in the prior videos. I believe it was video six that we made, we started making that, or we started using it. Um, so in this instance, the slave is axis one, the master is the virtual axis. The again, the uh, the motion control is going to be the UDT that we're using. 
the direction is going to be zero. Um, so that the uh, basically that we're going to go off the ratio is going to be the draw at the axis one draw value. So that's going to be input from the HMI. So really, I could say let's let's rename that to say HMI. So that way we know it's coming from the HMI. Uh, so we'll have the HMI uh, ratio in there. And then so if we change the ratio and it's not equal to the last ratio, then it will update the ratio. Now, now that we have that described and we have that put in, what do we, you know, to keep this uh, as quick as possible, I haven't done axis 2, 3, or 4 yet. So what we'll do is we'll go ahead and export this. So let's go ahead and export the routine that we've, we've made. And we're going to go back through and import them into 2, 3, and 4. So export. Uh, come down here and again you want to delete the old, right? Because it's just basically a placeholder so we know what to, what to put in. So we're not really doing anything special besides holding the place. Okay, so import draw controls. This, the name will still be draw control. All we need to do is search and find and change axis one to axis two because we're on axis two program right now. So replace and why is it not finding it? Am I not spelling something right? Uh, hmm. Okay. Let's go through this real quick. Like, this should find. Copy. Paste. Okay, so what I did is I had a space in there. Um, you couldn't see it, but I had a space in there. Uh, so that, that's why I come back here and, and did what I did. Um, just like I would do right here, right? Just cop You can copy this, come back in, and just paste it in here. And again, paste it again and, and put in what you want. So we'll go ahead and replace that. Replace everything like we have. Um, and the, again, the A-list and everything changed. Uh, we'll go back through the properties and make sure everything changed like it's supposed to or it looks like it did. Um, these certain things will stay the same because they're global. They're, uh, they're processor tag. Okay, so let's open this up. And verify that everything did change to axis 2. We kept our same properties. Uh, just to show that I'm not pre-doing this again there's nothing in these axes for the draw control so in axis 3 now let's repeat the process for axis 3 we'll delete it come back and import so you see we're kind of getting a little bit more filled out you know I mean this would be in the day 8 you know we're kind of getting a little bit more into the things we're doing um, kind of going a little quicker and that's just because uh, so to, to what I was trying to show you know is you really want to you know kind of go through this and, and modulously program as quick as you can you don't want to have to go back and and do each individual one of these uh, every time and you know I mean it, unless you just want to type and, and just go through the motions. Um, so again, we'll double check what we got. Everything looks good. We accept it. We open it up again. Verify that everything changed. It did. We're good. Values are still in here. <clears throat> just makes life so much easier. Uh, let's see. One more to do, right? So import, OK, 
Okay, go to tags. X is one. X X is four. You can go through and make sure they're changing at the same time too. I mean, if that's, if that's what you want to do. Um, so we got one more we didn't do. And I, I hope I'm not going too fast. You know, I think by now that you kind of see the drift of what I'm doing. So again, double check. Make sure everything changed. It did. Go in and open it up as soon as it, to verify that the changes took. Um, the alias is took with the tag structures, right? Uh, everything's good. So uh, with that said, we went ahead and added, um, to kind of go through what we've done, in our main control, right, we've added a run command. So the machine run command would enable the draw control, right? In the draw control, we use that bit in each program if the axis is on, then we say the axis is able to be geared. If it's able to be geared, then we want to go ahead and gear it. If the, by chance, the, um, even if it's running, especially while it's running, if you change the draw, then it will immediately, these will say that they're not equal anymore. It will index this bit high, which will drop this bit. And as soon as it changes, the value, the new value will come in here and it will automatically index this back, right? So you'll see it split secondly drop the IP bit. And then when it drops the IP bit, it will go ahead and pop it back in. And then that's the new value. Again, what we've done too um, is if you look in each axis, We've added the ER bit. So in the instance of uh, an instruction fault that are a mag, um, a gearing fault, what we're going to do is we're going to say there's a gearing fault to shut down everything. So some, like say for instance, something out of all four of them, one didn't gear for some odd reason. We want to go ahead and we're going to use this as a summing bit in the program down here. And we're going to say, okay, all of them are good. Everything's fine. Everything's geared up. We should be, I mean, we're 100% running. Where everything's good. If it didn't, immediately stop and then go back through the motions. You know, so in their state machine, basically, we will then fault our state machine back to a zero state. Uh, we will come back and show you, um, you know, as we get the programming done on the axes, we'll come back and program the state machine more that we've done so far. And then we'll go ahead and get some controls put in there for that. So um, this video actually kind of ran right at the time limit. You know, we're right at, at 13, 13 minutes. So that's pretty good. Um, we know we, we want to go ahead and try to keep these under 15 if we can. Uh, so, so far, we have our main routine, jumping our subroutines, right? In each axis, we have our draw control. We have our on which is our, our home, I should say, which is our on. We're using our summon bit, right? We have our control, which is our faults and stuff of that nature. Um, and again, we really don't need all this. We really just need this one right here. Um, so we may come back and just delete this. I'm not sure. Uh, we can we'll probably still use this as a summing bit, honestly. Uh, I probably, I mean, that's probably the best bet just to say, okay, uh, all axes are okay. So we'll probably keep this, um, but all axes are done now. So we have this, this, uh, we have the axis main, main routine, axis draw, the axis home, the control, all those are done. And now we can come back and start doing more in our main program as far as the control scenario for the whole machine. And then we can start actually doing the uh, state machine programming. So uh, with that said, this concludes uh, day eight and we will be picking back up where we left off on day nine. So I look forward to, uh, you know, uh, 
keep progressing on this project. Uh, day nine, I think we're making pretty good prog progress so far. And um, thank you for your time. You know, thank you for your support and everything. And uh, you know, leave me some comments below. You know, if you if you're liking what you're seeing or direction, or maybe if you want to see something else. All right, again, thanks.